Praise the Lord. God bless you, everyone. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Father, we thank you for another day that you have given us. Lord, we exalt your name, Father. We give you honor and we give you praise. And I thank your Holy Spirit for being in our life. Well, praise the Lord. God bless you, everyone. This is Apostle Hopkins. Amen. And I am coming at you with a teaching this morning. And before I do anything this morning, I would like to thank all of you who have cash tapped us a $5 donation, we appreciate it. And guess what? Anyone that are listening to our teachings, if you don't do give us anything at all, God bless you still. Enjoy the message. Enjoy the teachings. Amen. And we're asking you to sit back and just enjoy the word of the Lord that we're about to bring to you this morning. Hallelujah. And it's just a blessing and an honor to bring you this message. Now, the title of this message today, glory be to God, uh, I'm getting ready to do my share stream. The title of the message today is, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, amen, how to cast out demons. And we're talking about, glory be to God, using, let me put that back. There we go. Thank you, Lord. There we are. Questions, the title of today's message is questions and answers about casting out demons. That is the title of our message today. Now, people of God, I have been doing deliverance for a quite a long time, and it has really been a blessing and an honor to have the Holy Spirit uh, deal with us down through the years in the ministry of deliverance and casting out demons and setting people free by the power of God. Now, what are we going to do is we're going to start answering some questions, and I'm going to come off and share a screen. We're going to start doing dealing with some questions and answers about casting out demons, and I will say this first and foremost, shouldn't have to say this to people, but you have to just about make sure you cover everything possible when it comes with dealing with people. Number one, we're talking about being born again, spirit-filled, blood-washed, and led by the Holy Spirit. I want to see God raise up more and more deliverance teachers. I want to see God raise up soldiers, amen, that will go out and do the work. I believe this, people of God, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. And I pray, my prayer to God is that there be more laborers sent into the field. Heavenly Father, as I open up this teaching today, Father, I ask your Holy Spirit to bless, Lord God, your people to gain an understanding and knowledge on the authority that Christ has given the church. Lord God, you told your disciples, you said that these signs will follow them that believe in your name, they will cast out devils. Father God, I thank you and I praise you. And in Luke chapter 10, the disciples went out two and by two, and they cast out devils, and principalities were dethroned, and strong men over cities were broken by the power of God. Lord God, I ask as I deal with this message entitled questions and answers about casting out demons, that we give some great insight to help people along the way. And we give God the praise and glory for it. Amen and amen. Now I'm going to say this, no matter how many years that you've been in deliverance, and I've been in deliverance now close to over 40 some years, uh, there's always someone that God will use in a different biblical method, in a different biblical way, amen, to get the job done. Let me say this to you. Kudos to you. I am happy for every deliverance worker, believer, Christian that is casting out demons and setting them free, setting people free. Now, I'm not like the disciples. The disciples at one time came to the Lord and said, Lord, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbid him because he followed not us. There is sometimes people out there who actually thinks that their little group of deliverance workers or their method of deliverance teaching is the only one out there. Well, that is loaded with pride and it's loaded with arrogance. Years ago, when I had started, this is almost over 40 some years ago when I started in deliverance, there was one particular deliverance camp group that I knew of that they felt as if that they were the premier deliverance people and they would cut other people off who wasn't a part of their group. And when I watched this happen, even though I gained things from them, learned from different things from them, what I did not take into my life was a prejudice or a pride that if someone doesn't do it my way, then they are not really in the deliverance ministry. The Holy Spirit, I will not embarrass the Holy Spirit by thinking that I got it all and nobody else got anything. Look, soldiers, God is raising up a lot of his people who are learning the word, 
who are spirit filled and for God's sake born again and you are setting people free as a general of deliverance, as a soldier of deliverance, as just a worker and a brother in the Lord, I encourage you, amen, to go to war against the real enemy and not us going to war against ourselves over methods because someone does it differently than you. Amen. Now, let me go on the screen share and get with this. And for, for you critics out there, I do not have the answer to how everybody does it. I don't know everything about deliverance. I'm still learning. So like you, you're still learning, so am I. But let me share a few things down through the years that the Lord has taught me about, amen, casting out demons. And everybody knows Christianity 101, God does not deliver anyone from anything that a person wants to keep. If you want to keep a stronghold, God will not force you to get delivered from it. Now, I'm going to get ready to jump on some of these scriptures that I'm sharing. Amen. And I will start with the first one. Uh, uh, and and, uh, and I'm going to start with the first one right here. Often in deliverance, I command them to go where the Holy Spirit is sending them. Now, that is the main primo thing right there. You know, I love my highlighter. Y'all know how I love dealing with this stuff. You send them where the Holy Spirit is sending them. Is everybody getting that? In other words, it's not like uh, I can just at will command the demon to go wherever I want it to go. And that's where it's going to be. Any worker in deliverance understands that unless the Holy Spirit gives the unction to function, you can't just cast it out. I will give you all a case in point. The Apostle Paul in the book of Acts chapter 16, when that young lady came to Paul in Acts chapter 16, she had a spirit of Python. She came in where Paul and them were ministering in prayer and intercession. The saints had went out to prayer. The Bible said this did she many days. Now you can find this in Acts chapter 16 and read it down and you will see this exact example in the Bible. She did it many days. Now, Paul being there, watching this woman manifest a spirit of divination or a mediumistic spirit, which will have counterfeited as a prophetic spirit uh, in the church. Uh, when Paul kept, kept dealing with her these few days, how many ever it was, Paul could not cast it out until he was led by the Holy Spirit. Now, some of you may go to a church and say, now I'm not talking about a church that doesn't cast out demons at all and are not interested in delivering people. I'm not talking about that. But some of you may go to a place where it is called a deliverance ministry and you may look at a manifestation in an individual's life and you might arrogantly say, I don't know why Brother Ivory won't just cast that demon out of that sister over there. Anybody can see he or she is bound. Well, let me tell you something. You have to be led by the Holy Spirit when and how to cast the demon out. You can't just jump up and cast it out. Now, I hope I've helped somebody with that question. The Apostle Paul said this woman did this for many days, but he could not cast it out until he got the leading and the uh, timing of the Holy Spirit. So you don't just walk in casting demons out of people. I want to share with you guys. I'm going to come on screen and share this. Years ago, when I first started learning deliverance, here I was going to a, my, a holiness church, and I will say I was going to welcome for gospel holiness church at the time. The bishop was Bishop Winfred Gregory, the most humblest man of God that I ever knew in my life. Well, here I was just freshly learning about deliverance. Now, Bishop Gregory taught me humility. He taught me foundation. He taught me the word that way. I had a friend, one of my best friends, I'm not going to name his name on this uh, video, but he had backslidden and walked away from the Lord. Well, this one Sunday, now mind you, I had been reading Pigs in the Parlor. I had been reading up books and deliverance. Now, the books that I was reading didn't do anything wrong, but I do want y'all to hear what happened. Now, here I was newly learning about deliverance, newly learning about the authority that I had as a believer. Now, follow the story. Follow the story. So when my friend who had vaccinated came in the door that Sunday morning, 
because he was my boy. Him and I used to hang out with scripture, but he fell deeply back into bondage. I ran to him, not thinking. I was young and I was ignorant. I want you to understand this. I was young and ignorant. Today, I would have never done that. So I, when he came in the door, I was so happy to see him. I wrapped my arms around him and I was just hugging him. And I, I did something that I didn't even know that I had this kind of authority. I was hugging him and I said, in the name of Jesus, I command you spirits that are holding my brother, let him go. And when I said that, he hit the floor, flapping like a fish. And I went down on the floor with him and all y'all ready to look at me. I could not cast it out, but I made it manifest. Tell you what I just said. Unled, unled by the Holy Spirit, the gift that was in me, the authority that was in me was able to make a demon manifest, but I could not deliver him. The archbishop, whose name was Bishop Hanser, he had a deliverance ministry, older seasoned veteran. He walks back to that place where we were on the floor. He kneels down and takes authority over that demon, shuts the whole thing down. And the brother came back to his room cell. He was able to enjoy and finish the service. And by the way, that brother did come back to the Lord, but not that day. He gave, they was able to get himself back together. And the bishop said to me, young man, meet me in my office. So I go back in the office with Bishop James Hanser. I will never forget this as long as I live. And I'm sharing you my fault so that you won't make the same mistake. Bishop Hanser said to me, he said, young man, that gift that you got, I've had that same gift for years. Don't you never, ever let me see you walk up to someone in the church and try to operate that gift without being in order and God leading it. What you did was made that boy manifest, but he was not ready to get delivered. Now, some of you sitting out there who may not have had uh, an experience like that, you go like, Brother Hopkins, how? How could you make a demon manifest by the authority that you have, but not be God. This is it. The demons recognized the authority I had, but they did not have a commission to leave because what I did wasn't sanctioned by God. What are you saying, Brother Hopkins? I am saying one time, you have to be led, to be led by the Spirit of God. I'm saying it again two times. You have to be led by the Spirit of God. I've said it again three times. You have to be led by the Spirit of God. So in short, it is possible to make demons manifest, but it doesn't mean the person gets delivered. What I failed to do with my friend was, what, first of all, I was out of order because I was not supposed to just grab somebody in, in our church and go to work on them out of order. Number two, I did not have his permission to get delivered. He was coming for service. He was coming trying to get himself together. But old little brother Hopkins, who had read a few books, who had learned a couple of things in some sort of delivered service, thought I would be able to just cast those demons out. And my dear friend, this is not to make you scared of deliverance. This is not to make you back up and say, well, I ain't gonna have nothing to do with that if that can happen. It, it's, I'm saying this to help you understand that you must do this in biblical order, under biblical covering, under God's, the Holy Ghost's, the Spirit of God's leading and timing. So what you're saying, bro? You can't just cast demons out of you. You have to be led by the Holy Spirit. And some of you got that amazing gift. You can, you've got a deliverance mantle on your life. And listen, my friend, you will have men win many battles when you learn how to listen to the Holy Spirit. I don't know why it is. We live in an age and a time. It's funny to me that so many people think you could just read somebody's book and all of a sudden go right in action. It does not work like that. 
and what have you. You have to be led by the Spirit of God or it can become a disaster. Not even Paul in Acts chapter 16 could deliver that woman until God said, the day is the day. Amen. Let me go back to my notes now and work the thing. Now, the next thing you have to know here is you, as you will look and see here, I'm using the book of, uh, I'm using the book of Psalms chapter uh, 149. Holy, wait a minute, hold on. Psalm 149, I got the, got the verses messed up. Okay, in the book of Psalms 149, it talks about to execute them, the judgments that are written, this honor have all his saints. Now in, in this book of Psalms, I think this is verse, uh, it might be verse 50, it might be verse 49. I'm not sure, I kind of got got caught up before I got it signed in my notes. But let's go past that. Y'all know in the book of Psalms 149 says, let the high praise of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute upon them the judgments written, so forth. So when you are going to cast out demons, the main thing you have to know that you have to do is to execute upon them the judgments that are written. That's Psalm 149, verse six. I knew I had it down there further. Let me put this in. Amen. Bear with my, me in, in perfect ivory here. So when I am taking authority over demonic strongholds, I try to execute on those demons written judgments in the Bible. Are you hearing me? In other words, I like to, as the Holy Spirit is leading me, as the Holy Spirit is ministering to me, number one, I do want to say this. If I am praying for a person over a specific area and we know the type of thing that is manifesting, I like to come at it by what the word of God. A good example is this. If I'm coming at a spirit of fear, I will use scriptures that are related to fear to both have read and also command with those verses. Now, the way we used to do it, when Evelyn and I did it as a team, uh, when baby, me, me and Babe did it together, me and Evelyn did it together, sometimes Evelyn would be reading, let's say if we were dealing with the spirit of fear in an individual, Evelyn would be reading the Bible verses on fear while I would be doing the commanding. By the way, if it's two or three of you doing deliverance on a person, back up and let the one person lead. And, uh, you cannot just have one saying this, the other saying that. It becomes very confusing. So what Evelyn and I would do is talking about executing the judgments written. Let me go ahead and highlight this right here. Amen. Thank you. What Evelyn and I would do is Evelyn would read the verses related to the stronghold. And I would be doing the commanding. And sometimes it would switch up. Sometimes I would be the one in the backing up and then Evelyn would go forward and what have you. So we like to use execute upon them. Why do we use scriptural judgment on demons? It weakens the demons resolve to stay. It also lets the demonic bondage know that you know they have no right to hold that ground according to the word of God. So whatever it is that you're doing warfare with, Talk now in, in some cases, a demon will be in a person and they know they have this demonic stronghold and they've gone through deliverance before. Ask them, talk to them, or the Holy Spirit may lead you to know what their the stronghold's name is. When you do that, go to scriptures to weaken the demonic grip. So we're executing upon them judgments written. And I'm going to get into that a little bit more. Also, there are times that the Spirit of God, I have to quote verses. Here goes a good, good one that I quote sometimes. I've had demons that when I'm getting ready to cast them out, when I'm hammering with the, with the name of Jesus, when I'm coming against every evil covenant, when I've had the person to renounce the sin, bondage, or open door, when I've had the person to come against the demonic stronghold that they've been fighting with, that have been attacking them, by the way, one main thing that I've found a lot in a lot of people's lives is that they don't understand that no matter how anointed that a deliverance person praying for you in deliverance is, if you do not hold your faith in God, if you, the one needing the deliverance, does not trust God being the deliverer, it can hinder you from getting your freedom. Everybody got that? Now moving right along. I'm going to say it again. It can hinder you from getting your freedom. Sometimes I've had to say to demons that the wicked shall be cast into hell 
and all nations that forget God. Now, whether you want to know, believe it or not, demonic strongholds are, are a nation. They are a unified corporate nation. They are unified corporate principalities that have spirits under them. They own territorial and inter and, and bodily areas of attack. So I tell that demon, I said, the word of God declares that they that do wicked shall be cast into hell. Uh, you look at this verse in the American Standard Version says, the wicked shall be turned back unto shields, even all the nation that forget God. In the Berean Study Bible, it says the wicked world will return to shields and all the nations forget God. So I ask the Father in the name of Jesus, I ask the Father to make this demon realize that he will be turned into hell. That all them that do wickedness will be turned into hell. Does everybody have that? Uh, also, I command them to fall into the pit they dug for the person they are tormenting. Let me ease this down to make it a little bit better to read. I hope you soldiers just bear with me and what have you. And this is just some methods that I use. You can use other scriptural methods. I command them not only let them know that they that do wickedly shall be turned into hell. I also command them to fall into the pit they dug for the person they are tormenting. Now, Brother Ivory, what does that mean? Glad you asked. That means whatever evil, wicked thing that you're doing to that individual, I command it to be upon your head, the demons. I command the judgment to return back on your head. The pit you dug, the thing you did to torment them, I command that judgment on you. And then Psalm chapter seven, verse 15 says, he made a pit and digged it and is fallen into the ditch which he made. So we command that. Also, I'm going to tell you guys this. I remember one time that there were uh, a, a particular demonic stronghold in an individual that had other spirits under him. Oh, by the way, sometimes you will find the need to command spirits under other spirits to, to be separated from their power. In other words, I've even asked God to confuse the demons so that they're unable to take orders from the spiritual strongholds that have that has been leading them on the inside. Now, Jesus in the, in, had dealt with a demon called Legion. Let me come out of the screen share and I'll come back. Jesus dealt with a demon. I think it's in Mark chapter five. And then Jesus was commanded that demon to come out. Now, I'm going to say this to you. When Jesus first told the demon to come out, it did not. God, the Holy Spirit was going to have Jesus to, do, to deal with that demon in another manner. manner. Now, well, God, I'm giving to say something that everybody should simply know. Jesus took the leading of the Holy Spirit. He didn't just do things. Now, somebody said, yes, he did. He was Jesus. Oh, here we go. Look, Matthew chapter four. Then was Jesus led to the wilderness to be tempered of the devil. Then the spirit of the Lord led Jesus into the wilderness to the temple to be tempted of the devil. So even Jesus, during his time on earth, had to wait upon the leading of the Holy Spirit. Is anybody following me? Now I'm going to move past that because that's Christianity 101. That's, that's first grade stuff there. So anyway, when you are commanding spirits to go, often the Holy Spirit, and this is not always the case. Say it one more time, Brother Ivory. This is not always the case. There will be times the Holy Spirit, and you're going to hear me keep saying the Holy Spirit, you're going to hear me keep saying the Spirit of God will lead you to command the demon to give its name. Now, the reason why the Holy Spirit will do that is for weakening the demon and exposing him. That is not always the method that happens. Each deliverance session is different. I may cast out a spirit out of an individual with the same name of the one you cast out last week, but I end up having to use a different method to deliver a person with that same demon this week. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? So the Holy Spirit had Jesus to ask that that spirit, what was his name? And the spirit said, my name is Legion, for we are many. Now, what it was indicating, saying was, 
the commanding or the ruling spirit that was in charge of commanding other demons in the Gadarean, his name was Legion. And Jesus dealt directly with Legion. And when he cast Legion out, all of the spirits coming behind him came out. Now, I want to say something to you. Because of the time period that Jesus was living in, that term legion was dealing with a Roman term of a number of commanding and soldiers that worked under a commander. This demon was saying that I am commander or ruling spirit over legion. Are you following me? And in this case, my topic is Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. Yes, he was to get the demon's name. And then he cast it out. Got that going back to my notes now. So, so there are demons also that fear the dry place. And then once again, uh, to, to deal with the question, but brother Ivory, how do you do it? I'm telling you how I do it. I, I do, when I am casting demons out, I cast them out by the leading of the Holy Spirit for that specific session. Every session is not the same. This is why you could have a deliverance session with me and then go have a deliverance session with another deliverance worker or another deliverance team. And they very well may discern spirits that I did not deal with or discern. It's because the Holy Spirit will deal with even our deliverance on the timing and the season that we are ready. They ain't going to leave until God says so. And you are not going to get free until you're ready. Is anybody hearing that? So there are demons that fear the dry places. So we ask the Father to send them there. We ask the Father to send them there. Matthew 12 and 43 says, when the unclean spirit comes out of a man. Now, let me go ahead and get this up here. Y'all know I love my little highlighter here. Go again. Thank you, Jesus. Let's do that. I'm going to turn this all a nice black. And I'm going to put my highlighter on that bad boy. There we go. When the unclean spirit comes out of a man, it passes through arid places or dry places seeking rest and does not find it. And in other words, it's seeking rest and does not find any rest. Now, the dry places that it is talking about here in Matthew 12 and 43 is tormenting to these demons. And I'm going to tell you why it's tormenting to them. It's tormenting to them because they need a human body to express their emotions, to express what they act out. Are you hearing me? Demons need that. And when they lose a human body to express what operates in them they hate it but the thing here in Matthew 12 and 43 through 45 says it walks through dry places seeking the rest and finds none and then that demon says well I'm going back to that former house that demon says I'm going to return right back to where I came out of and then when he goes he finds that house empty swept and garnished and he takes with him now seven other spirits more wicked than the first. You will find this in Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 through 45. Now, here goes the deal. That and Now, in order to keep a demon out, once it has been cast out, after a demon is cast out, it is imperative. It is highly necessary that one, number one, make sure that you have a determination to serve the Lord with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your mind. Deliverance is not relief. No, God does not deliver you so you can feel relief or not be bothered by devils. He delivers us to serve him. Does everybody get that? When you go through deliverance, it is your place. It is up to you who have gotten delivered. It is up to you to do everything in your power to submit to the spirit of God, to submit yourself Humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. And never flee, that, you know, flee everything that is against God's word or else it will give access to demons. Now, sometimes I get people who do this. 
God delivers them from a demonic stronghold and heals what they do. They run around and they have freedom and they say, well, I got a little bit of freedom. I'm good. Then all of a sudden they get tempted in their flesh and you're going to be tempted because every attack of the enemy that he will, one of the things he will try to do is to bring back the temptation, bring back a situation, bring you into an environment that will bind you up. It's up to you after you've been delivered to stay away from the stuff you've been delivered from. Now, I know this sounds elementary, but I get people all the time who says, well, Brother Ivory, uh, uh, I got delivered last year, but I went through some things and, and I got upset with God and I got upset with church and I got upset with life and I went on back, back doing what I was doing. And then they come back and said that I'm struggling worse. Doll pumpkin, baby doll, baby face. What you've done, my brother, my sister, is you open up a door for a spirit that was a demonic stronghold in your life, in your bloodline, and that thing is saying, I gotta hold them. Because this this God that they went to, this 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 Jesus that they went to, if they get back with him, it's gonna take us a lot of work to keep them bound. So when you do that, you open the door to demonic strongholds. People ask me all the time, what do I do, Brother Abbe, to hold my freedom? Cut out your foolishness. Flee sin. Resist the devil. And don't let him lie to you. I'll say it again. Do not, do not let him lie to you and tell you you are not delivered because you felt the temptation. I'm going to use this one. And good morning to you, my daughter, Rose, uh, Rose Bailey. How you doing, Rosebud? Love you, girl. Good morning, Rosie. Look, let me say this to you. When God delivers you from a stronghold and you get that freedom, that deliverance from the demon does not take away the temptation. Boom. What did he just say? He said, what? The deliverance from the demonic bondage takes away the demon that heightens the temptation because he got inside your body that exaggerates it because he got was inside your body. Through the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit, God casts the demon out. But you still are dealing now with the corner mind. Just because you feel, you say, well, when I get deli delivered from lust, will I ever be tempted by lust? When I get delivered from a lust spirit, will I ever be tempted by lust? Of course you will. That's the reason why the demon was there. Remember, you don't you don't do you don't do what you do because you have a demon. You often get demons because of what you're doing. I'm gonna say it one more time. You do not do what you do because you have a demon. You often pick up demons because of what you're doing, because of what has been done. What do you mean by what has been done? It, in some of our family lines, there are people in our bloodlines that have opened up demonic portals, gates and doors in the family line. That's why you have families that can be totally hit with drugs, addiction, lust, perversion, and even witchcraft. As a believer, when you give your life to the Lord, you can shut that down. And when you do, don't let the demons trip you up and make you think, oh, it's still there because I got Temptation is made to be denied, crucified, put to death. You say, what, Brother Ivory? In other words, if God delivered me, has delivered me from a spirit of lust, and I'll be honest with you, folks, that's the farthest thing from my mind, and it's not because I'm an older gentleman, okay? It is because I'm free. I was delivered from lust. I was delivered from drug addiction. I don't drink, I don't dope, and I don't chase nobody. But that was a demon I had in my bloodline. And God delivered me. Now, if a temptation hit my mind, uh, uh, you know, you're tempted to get high, or you're tempted to take a drink, or you're tempted to lust, guess what? If a temptation hits my mind, and it can, and it does, I crucify it. I put it to death. Are you hearing me? Bible said, anyone that will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. So as far as casting out the demon, that's one thing. Crucifying the temptation, crucifying the feeling of doing it, that's on you. Now, let me go ahead a little bit further and get back. Amen. On this, on this, uh, my notes here, praise God. 
I'm having fun. Amen. All right, here goes, here goes another, area, another area we're going to look at here. Uh, now, you cannot cast them into the abyss or the pit or hell because why? Now, now that this is a thought rather than saying that we cannot do it. Now, this is not an argument right here. This is just a point. This is all. This is just kind of throw that in here, what have you. One of my good friend soldiers asked me these questions, and I really appreciate it. I love you. That soldier knows who I'm talking about. I love you, soldier. Amen. Now, now here goes the answer. You, you ask the father to send them where he wants them to go. Got that? I already went through to execute upon them the judgments written. That was Psalm 149, verse 6. God will often, during a deliverance, have you to use scriptures that the demons fear, and you use them to drive them out. Are you hearing me? There are times that God will so show you verses that the demons fear, and you drive them up with these verses. Now, I'm going to use this example here. Uh, uh, once I was led to tell a demon, now listen at this way. Let me enlarge this baby here because I like this and what happened. Then I'm going to come off stream and talk a little bit more and what happened. I love you guys this morning. I really appreciate it. By the way, I appreciate all many of you that are, that support us, that send uh, you know, your cash, cash app of five dollars to just bless Evelyn and I. I thank you for that. Amen. So, uh, you know, just want you to know, I appreciate you. And thank you for doing it. Now, let me get right here. I was trying to adjust things. That's why I went off talking about something else. Once I was led to tell a demon, you are going to be judged by God and forever cast into hell. Torment, it left the person weeping. I mean, this demon wept like a baby. I mean, y'all, it was, it was amazing. The thing was crying like a baby. And I said, oh, my God. That demon said, don't say that. And I was like, what? And the demon turned around and spoke out in a clear voice and said, Satan lied to us. He lied to us. And now we're going to be judged. I was like, what? This demon was so afraid of being cast in hell. I quoted Matthew 25 and 41. I said, you do know that hell was prepared for you and the devil. And that demonic stronghold began to just whip it. First, I started going, don't say that. Please don't say that. We didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. And he kept saying he lied to us, talking about Satan. He deceived us. Listen, the spirit realm is more, it is more like us as far as humanity than you would know. These spirits know emotionally that they were led into a lie by Satan to rise up against God the Father. These demons realize now that they've been hoodwinked and bamboozled by the deceiver. Are you hearing me? And I quoted this verse. And then shall they say unto them on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angel. And I literally told the demon, According to God's word, here goes your future. You will be depart from them. Ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. I say to every demonic stronghold, every demonic bondage out there, one day you will face the final judgment into everlasting fire. And it was created specifically for you. Hell was never made for man. It was literally made to judge these fallen ones. Is anybody with me? Now, did I say that no men goes to hell? I did not say that. And by the way, I'm not going to argue and debate with anyone. Do I believe that there's such a place as hell? Mm -hmm. Do I believe that there's eternal judgment? Mm -hmm. Just like I believe there's eternal life? Mm -hmm. Just like I believe there's eternal bliss? Mm -hmm. Not going to argue with you. Not open to debate. Save your emails. You're not going to change me on that. But these spirits know that this judgment is there for them. Now, I'm going to read this question and see if I can form it. And let's get ready to talk about principalities and spiritual warfare. Like, listen, my, my, my friend, my friend asked, I guess my question to be clear is for principalities. You take authority over them in the name of Jesus. And then do you cast them into dry places? You cannot cast them into the bits or the pit of hell because why? And I'll go into that up there further where I said that we send them where the Lord is sending them. And, uh, and that's exactly where they go now. 
they have authority over territories and regions that they are operating in and need some type of permission right from God. I don't know, I'm confused. And I'm helping my, my dear worker to get an understanding here. Now, when Daniel was dealing with a principality, now that is a demonic territorial stronghold that deals over regions, nations, towns, communities, or areas. Everybody got me there? Principalities was engaged with fasting, prayer, and angelic warfare. They were not cast out, but down. Are y'all hearing me? Now, once again, some of you may have other wisdom on this. I'm open to learn because I don't know everything. I'm trying to learn, okay? When Daniel, in Daniel chapter 10, verse 20 and 21, when Daniel went before the Lord to understand a prophetic word that God was giving him, there was a principality over the kingdom of Persia that was fighting him. This principality over the kingdom of Persia also was of spirit and responsible for the change that took place over that region. So it was, it was demonically orchestrated but it was from the heavenlies, from the heavenlies, commanding spirits in the earth to operate a change of historical events. Got that? This principality, again, was in the heavens, not inside a person, in the heavens, administrating and commanding demons and men on the earth, in government officials, in territorial areas, it caused the whole region to be changed by its manifestation. I'll even say this. Uh, let me finish Daniel, and I'm going to say something about Acts chapter 8. I hope everyone is enjoying this. And once again, there are some of you may know a little bit more about this than I do. I'm open to learn. I'm happy for it. I'm not close-minded to you. Amen? Now, let me go ahead a little bit further. Now, the reason why I said that these were not cast out, when Daniel engaged, engaged, when Daniel engaged these principalities, he was doing fasting and he was praying for 21 days. And, uh, and, and angelic warfare came. Matter of fact, the angel said, from the first day you set your face to afflict yourself before God, the first day you started fasting, Daniel, God has sent the answer. But a principality in the heavens, it was not people bothering Daniel. It was a principality. So a principality, a territorial spirit, will try to interrupt prophetic understanding. It will try to interrupt and change governmental laws and rulership. Everybody got me? Now, this is what it says in Daniel chapter 10, verse 20 and 21. Then said he, knowest thou where whence I am come unto thee? Now, this is the angel talking to Daniel. Then saith he, knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee? And now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grisha shall come. So this angel goes to fight with this other prince of Persia. And I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael your prince. So Daniel's nation, Israel, had a prince, which was Michael. We have angelic beings that are on our side. This is why the Bible says the angels of the Lord and camps of our heirs of salvation to deliver. And the an angel of the Lord and camps about me to engage spiritual strongholds that I may not even know are coming at me. Many times throughout my life, God Almighty, angelic reinforcements have been there protecting me. Now, let me say this. I'm going to throw this in and I'm going to come back to the next point that I want to share. In the book of Acts, chapter 8, there was a occult principality that was operating through Simon the Sorcerer. Simon the Sorcerer, I'm going to now bear with me the way I'm saying this. Simon the Sorcerer was the occult minister. Simon the Sorcerer was the one who brought the people before the altar of whatever demons that he was talking to. Simon did not have the Holy Spirit at all. And when he finished with the city of Samaria, all gave heed to him from the least to the greatest, which means in that city of Samaria, 
Simon the sorcerer operating under the principality of witchcraft and occultism over the city of Samaria. He taught things and did things and opened people up through his witchcraft to a principality who had demons under it, dispersing them into everyone in that city from the least to the greatest. In other words, the street, amen, to the corporate area. And Philip goes in there, preaches Christ, dismantles, shakes and moves that principality, breaks that yoke and demons and healing and infirmities were broken by the power of God's word. Why? Because Philip was assigned by the Holy Spirit to go into Samaria and take on that stronghold. I will never forget this as long as I live. One of my Apostle Glenda uh, sample, uh, uh, Campbell, Apostle Glenda Campbell and Apostle Sam Campbell took me to Saranam. And when I got in, the, in Saranam, an anointing fell upon me. I was in that hotel room and I said, what in the world? I said, something is different on me. An anointing fell on me. And when I went into that church, that powerful church in Seven Am to preach, one man spoke to me. And when I was walked, I walked in the middle of a crowd. I don't know whether it was maybe a thousand people or less in there. I don't know. I'm not caring about how, the numbers. But when I walked in the middle of the crowd, commanding demons to come out of people, all of a sudden, this guy in Seven Am began to speak directly to me. And he said, why did he send you here? We had this thing under control. Why? Why? And the power of God, I mean, that service in Suriname was off the hook. I'm talking about God moved by his power. Oh my God, I loved it, amen. But what happened was, when I went back to the room, I sat on the edge of my bed that night and could hardly go to sleep. I was saying, oh my God, I said, Lord, some of these people didn't even speak English. Some of these people did not even understand what I said, but the demons in them did. And I was going like, Lord, my God of mercy, the power of God moved mightily. But it was an anointing that had a charge that had, had the season for me to be there to pull that stronghold down. So when you, I said this to you, when you are engaged in a city, matter of fact, the word city is polymos. And the Bible talks about polymas. The word polymas in Luke chapter 10 is the word city. It means a fortified place. When you go into a fortified place, when you go in central city, under the anointing, under the charge of God, the polymas, the fortified place, the principalities yield to your authority. All right, and that's why you're able to cast demons out and pull down principalities. Is anybody hearing me? Let me go on a little bit further. My God, I wanted to share this to you before I go this morning. And I hope I'm not talking too fast. I'm excited. Hey Amen. this is one of the first that I've done this year. And I'm just kind of excited. Evan and I woke up this morning and I was like, girl, girlfriend, I'm far up. Now listen here. I believe it is possible. Now listen to what I'm getting ready to say. Now hear me what I'm saying. I believe that it is possible that some of the spirits behind mental warfare are both demons inside being commanded by demons outside. And once again, this is not always the case. Everybody got that? Now, I'm going to tell you why I'm saying this. Now, listen to this. Uh, in 2 Corinthians 10.5, it talks about, and here, it, here goes that verse that reads like this. Let me give this a little highlight. I might give it a little bit different color. Okay, and I might pump it up a little bit. I don't like that color. Let me see. You know what I like? Y'all, guys, I like the color blue. I like that color blue. There you go. That's what I want to do. Second Corinthians 10.5. Casting down imagination. Notice it says casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, this here is not casting out a demon. It's casting down reasonings, ideas, and concepts that are charged by demonic suggestions, demonic interference. Got that? 
Now, this year, I've often found, and this is not always the case, that some people can have a principality, a demonic spirit whispering on the outside, giving suggestions, trying to get in of things that do not, that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God. And the Bible talks about here in 2 Corinthians uh, 10, 6, it talks about with a readiness, with a having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. These spirits that comes with these suggestions, these spirits that come with these suggestions, they come with them trying to get you to come out of obedience to Christ. Their main aim is to bind you through suggestions, ideas, concepts, and reasoning. This is how principalities get into the mind of a person. Everybody got that? That's how they get into the mind of a person. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, let me go ahead a little bit further here. Praise the Lord. Now, in the book of Mark chapter 5, verse 15, Mark 5 and 15, we find a whole different ball game. These are not suggestions in the gathering. These are demons inside him, obviously. Got that? These are not suggestions inside the gathering's mind. These are demons that are in him. Let me work my little scripture here. Y'all, I'm having fun this morning. Woo! I'm loving it, y'all. Good God Almighty, I'm having a ball. I love you guys so much. Amen. And Evan, I just having a ball this Monday morning. Look what it says in Mark 5, 15. And they come unto Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and who had legion sitting. And look at this point right here. Look at this point right here. He was sitting and clothed in his right mind. Got that? Now, there's two mental warfares. Up here is the one where it says, casting down imaginations. That's what it said. And every high thing is self itself against the knowledge of God. That's what that says right here, sweetie. Everybody got me? Hold on, let me get there and make that black good. Boom. Now, here is a matter of casting down everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Down here, uh, down here, the person having demons cast out, they were closed and in their right mind. So in this case, the demons had to be cast out in order for the person to get in their right mind. Got that? So there are ways that when we're dealing with spirits, there is the casting out and the commanding of the demons. There is the pulling down of every high thing that is also self against the knowledge of God. And there's the casting out. Now, Brother Audrey, why are you sharing all of this stuff this way? You that are in deliverance must understand the difference. You must understand when the Holy Spirit is having you to cast something out or down. You have to understand the difference. You have to be led by the Holy Spirit to tell whether it is something you are casting out or you are training the person how to cast down. Majority of the time, when you are praying deliverance with someone, now to all of my, now I'm not even going to give you time of day. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to give you time of day. Let me move on. To those who don't understand why counseling is needed along with deliverance, counseling part is wise scriptural counsel. Wise scriptural counsel to help the individual identify why, what is the reason, what cause, and how to hold the ground. That's all that is. Nothing less and nothing more. I've had people come to me for counseling and deliverance sessions, and I have sat with them in a 45-minute session. I've sat with them, and I've helped them understand how to negotiate and warfare against the demon's suggestions, uh, things that it's trying to come up with in the mind with. And then I've had people that have sat in these counseling and delivery sessions, and we had to cast demons out, commanding spirits to come out, and the power of God has been amazing in those sessions. And, uh, and also, in that 45 minutes, we have time to show them how to hold the ground. 
not only to get a demon out, but out of the holy ground. Now, I'm going to say this before I get ready to go. I spent a large part of my life, all, all, over 40 years, doing deliverance conferences all over America and some foreign country. And we have been extremely successful at doing it. Got me? But people of God, uh, the, what I know happens in a mass deliverance is this. First of all, a mass deliverance is sovereign by God. And in a mass deliverance, it is very well possible to get deliverance and in hold. Got that? In a mass deliverance, it is possible for the power of God to deliver you and you hold your freedom. Also, in some mass deliverance, people get freedom, but they don't have counsel on how to hold their freedom. I was noticed in this season of my life, because I'm doing deliverance and counseling, whether it's uh, or whether it's deliverance and uh, things and all of that, or whether it's counseling with marriage and different things that I deal with, I will do this and then I will die. See, I realized that at this season of my life, this is why I said to people, I am doing exactly what God told me to do and then I will die. I know that in this season of me and Evelyn's life, we will do what we're doing right now, then die. So in this process of time, amen, the Lord has me being able at given moments to be able to train and teach on YouTube, on Facebook, on any avenue possible. That's what I'm doing. I don't, I'm not trying to get a person to join me, become a part of any fellowship with me, uh, me become your this, this, any other. And yes, I have ministries that are connected with me, but I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in giving good deliverance wisdom. I'm interested in doing my deliverance and counseling session. I'm interested in doing my YouTube teachings. I'm interested in doing my Zoom classes with ministries that want me. I'm interested in doing the marriage work and all that that I do. And then I shall go home with the Lord. So people of God, trust that today's teaching is a blessing to you. I trust that the Holy Spirit really, really has blessed you with this teaching. And this is Apostle Ivory Hopkins. I'm getting ready to sign off. Amen. And the title of the message today is Questions and Answers About Casting Out Demons. Well, God, I will tell you like I usually do. I'm going to catch you all in another deliverance and teaching session that we do. Amen. And if you feel led of the Lord and you feel like you want to bless us, Amen. With a five dollar donation. And once again, I tell you, no one has to. This ain't you got to bless me. Uh -uh, we ain't playing that game. We are not playing that foolishness. This is our cash app. Our, our cash app is General Ivory Hopkins. As many as can bless us with a five dollar donation. We appreciate that. Someone said to me, you should ask people for more. There's a reason why I asked for the for a five dollar donation. That five is a it is a it is an example of something that the Lord has put in my heart. And that example is just that very least asking someone, amen, to be a blessing. And we thank God for the fivefold ministry and the fivefold call of God that he got in his apostolic church and foundation today. Well, guys, I will tell you like I usually do. You want to always remember, guys, that God, he is always watching. Thank you all for tuning in. God bless you and we'll catch you guys later. I'm coming back again with another teaching. This was the one I did on questions and answers about casting out demons. Guys, I'm out.